Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today I want to make a tutorial of the Swedish Digitakt from Electron. And uh, they just released a new uh, software update, 1.02. And I've been waiting for them to, to solve a few quirks of the initial baby release of the Digitakt. And I think this is the one. So what I'm going to start with is to actually show how to upload the firmware and also introduce the new app uh, for uploading stuff into the Electron machines. So yeah, let's get to it. There's a lot of stuff to show you today. Okay, so here it is, the dig attack. The first thing I'm going to do is to, to upgrade the firm to the current firmware that came out today. I'm going to turn it on. It says 1.01 .01 there real quick. And uh, 1.02 came out today, so I'm going to upgrade it. There we go. I'm going to press this cogwheel here. I'm going to go down to the MIDI config settings first to make sure that it communicates over USB, which is faster than MIDI. Just going to make sure in the port config that down here USB is selected. So MIDI and USB is currently being used as an input and as an output. So let's try that. Can exit this, exit, go to system, always upgrade. Now I'm going to start this new app called Transfer. Uh, before this they were using this app called uh, C6 and now it's a kind of fresh version here. It's simpler to use. I'm going to set up the MIDI input being the dig attacked and MIDI output being the dig attacked and there we go. We have a handshake in place. So I'm going to go over to Finder again and uh, get ready to send that file. First I'm going to go here and say OS upgrade. Yes. Now it's waiting for a sysx file. I'm going to drag this over and there we go. It, it went really fast and it's just there. I can see it's writing the, the firmware success and rebooting and stuff. So 1.02, a real quick operation, right? Yeah. And boom, now it's updated really fast, really no problems. Uh, I'd advise you to use this connection straight to your computer, not through any hubs or anything. I have had problems in the past when I'm using hubs. Uh, so whenever I perform a system upgrade, I always go straight to the machine. Okay, the update went well. The first thing I want to do now is create a project. This little wheel there is going to get you to this menu. Project, yes. Um, manage project, yes. I'm going to go down here. Whenever you're in a browser, you can notice that there is like a little arrow on the side there. Sometimes there is an arrow on the left side as well. These are menus. This is not a touch screen, so you have to use the arrows here. So right arrow means action menu. Left arrow means viewing uh, or sorting um, arrow. So let's go to the right arrow here, menu. Initialize new in the selected space. Yes, clearing, setting up a little project there. I'm going to go down there, say rename, and I'm going to call it. When you're naming stuff, function is the keyboard you can do like no to to erase. You can also do stuff like clear. Yeah. So I'm going to call it tut. And actually I screwed up a few moments ago. So I'm going to call it tut3. Okay. Yes. Now we've got this tut3 project here. I'm going to load it. I'm going to again go into the action menu on the right. And go down and say load from. There are actually two. This is like the project manager. I could also go in there to load project. This In this place, you can only load stuff. So it's a quicker menu. I'm going to go down here and notice there are no side menus here. This is just like select, press yes. I, do you want to save what you just did? No, actually, I don't. Are you sure you don't want to save this? Yes, I'm sure. This is good because now we know that there is like a safety mechanism when you're loading a project that you won't screw up. You get this question twice. Okay. So I'm in this project that I just called TUT3. And uh, here we are. The first thing I do is press some buttons. These are the presets, factory presets that come with every initialized project. The first row here is the samples. 
The second row is MIDI. There is no MIDI connected. I will connect it later. So let's talk about samples. The samples are right here, right now. And if you notice, we're in the source page and we can see this number here. Every sample has its own set of manipulation parameter pages. And as you can see, uh, we're on, on the stores page now. We've got the trig page, source page, a filter page, amp page, and an LFO page. You can also see their stuff in orange, and they are kind of master pages, which we will also get into. Anything typed in orange is accessed by pressing and holding the function button. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to the source page again because that is typically where it all begins. This is a kick drum. If I want to, I could start laying out this onto the grid. I could press this record button. Whenever the record button is lit, it means you can now start, you know, you can't play stuff now, but you can start programming stuff on the timeline. So for instance now, it sounds like this. If I want to, I could press track and select another track because once this is lit, I can't select tracks by just, by just pressing them. If it's not lit, I can pr yeah, let's go to this and then enter again. Yeah, I could go to another track by pressing either exit, press the track and enter this grid mode again, or silently using track and the desired track. For instance, this tone track. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's take another one, this clap. I'm sure it fits right in there. Perhaps another one says it's a cowbell. Let's try it out. Exit this. Yeah, it's a cowbell. Let's try it. Actually, let's play it a little lower. I'm going to go into the source menu here. It has two modes. Uh, the sample waveform mode, where you can't see the parameters uh, other than when you start fiddling around with them. Uh, and the other mode where you can see the parameters, but not the sample waveform. So let's tune down this sample and make the length shorter. I'm going to go in here and see what I'm doing. Yeah, so it's only going to play it there. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. Okay, now I'm going to live record this into it. Rec and play will live record. I can also turn on a, a, a metronome, like function and metronome. You can see active. No, it's not active. Let's activate it. Yeah, you can see EFGH, EFGH. Always labeled so you know what, uh, which one does what when it's not apparent. Okay, so now there is a, a little uh, metronome there. Perhaps we want it louder. Metronome. Go in here. Yeah. I actually want to pre-roll uh, one bar be because I, I want to do like this. Wreck and play. And there we can start doing this. So I'm going to... Two, three, and... Ah, oh, that's terrible. I thought that was terrible. I'm going to go into here. I could manually, you know, take them away, but I could also, while I'm in here, in the grid mode, press function and clear. This is a bit scary because if you don't know what you're doing, you could clear the whole pattern if this is not lit. If it's lit, you only clear the current track. And it says here what track you're on, but it could be scary if you don't know exactly what track you're on. Double check. Yeah, I'm on this track. This is the one I want to clear and uh, function and clear. Now, did you see that? I just undid it. So as long as you don't touch anything, you can undo stuff. 
So function again, clear, it's cleared. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna practice. Like that. Like that. That is good. Okay. So now I'm gonna do cut oh man, it's it's raining. Can you hear it? It's only just pouring down in the window. Okay. I'm gonna keep going in the rain. So so wreck and play. One, two, three, and Okay, yeah, I'm gonna turn off the metronome now. It served its purpose. Off, yeah, down. And uh, let's let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, not too shabby. Let's actually look at the timing specifically. I'm gonna press this. You know, I'm I'm moving a bit fast, and but you can pause, right? It's it's YouTube. I'm going into grid mode, I'm going out of grid mode, uh, and when I'm in grid mode, I can start programming, right? So these are the tricks that I just live recorded in there. Let's press and hold. You can see right and left says micro time plus and micro time minus. If I press either right or left, I could see actually exactly how my timing was. I could see that it was a little bit late on both of them, giving them like an organic feel but also maybe it's unwanted so I could go in there and keep pressing the arrows and start adjusting and in the middle it's like on the grid but I could also go in into this function function and quantize and you can see here that you can actually start quantizing just the current track or the global everything on all tracks including MIDI so uh, the current track could be quantized like this and as you can see it's gradually quantizing so I could quantize just a little if I want to keep my sloppy timing but make it closer to tight I could do that yeah or I could do it on everything like that but remember that if you're using like quant if you're quantizing a track or globally um, this basically has no effect so if you're doing if you're manually adjusting micro timing and you want it uh, it will not be reflected if it's quantized so I'm gonna turn off the quantize and I'm gonna show you another way to quantize if you pay attention now when I'm pressing rec and play it says unquantized live recording so if I press that again quantized live recording I could alternate between quantized or unquantized live recording so that means whatever I'm recording is actually placed exactly on the grid quantized uh, which you know yeah it's good to know there are two different approaches to quantizing so what I'm gonna do now is do the third option is like manually getting them into place yeah just to show you that is like three different ways of uh, dealing with quantizing and timing okay <laughs> Okay, so now if I want to save this and make sure that this is safely saved and stored on the device, I could use this really great shortcut function and save project. Dish. Confirm save. Do you want to save? Yes. Now, this is a very, very, very good thing because now it's a super easy thing to save. You know when it's saved, and you know uh, when it's not saved. And the electron machine they work like this if you don't save it's still there when you turn off the machine and turn it on again it's still there in a sort of current project working state memory in its own little buffer but if you reload that project it's going to be reloaded to the state when it was last saved manually so pay attention to that 
We can also see like there is something here called save pattern. And this is actually s updating the actual project file with just a selected pattern. So you could save manually just one pattern. If, if you've got like, several patterns going and, and you failed with a couple of them, but one in particular is something you like, you could manually save just that one. So uh, actually, I'm going to show you this. This is interesting. It's good. It can be confusing, but it's very good and it's very useful. Okay. So now we just save, like save, I save again, save. So everything that we've done so far is saved. Pattern one. Yeah, it's right there. It's saved. If I now function and copy, and I go into the next pattern, function paste. It's just a straight copy of the whole thing. If I here make some fundamental changes, like um, maybe I'm um, using Control All, pressing this down in, uh, in order to change all the parameters and all the tracks, like this. Tune down, bit reduction on everything, amp some overdrive on everything. Everything shorter. Go filter everything. Everything is a bit crazy now. Some envelope here. Maybe some reverb on everything. Yeah. So now we've got two patterns here. Pattern one. Pattern two. Okay, let's make a third one. So um, I'm going to copy pattern, and by the way, pay attention, I'm copying and pasting patterns now because the rec button is not lit. If it is lit, I'm copying just a track. If it's not lit, I'm copying a whole pattern. So pattern is copied, I go to pattern 3, paste, and now I'm going to destroy it totally here. So pattern 3 is going to be... Um, Let's see, I'm going to change the bit reduction, I'm going to play everything in reverse. I'm going to change the length. Yeah, and change the tuning. Okay, so now we've got three things here now. Pattern 1, it is saved the last time we saved the project. Pattern 2 is not saved into the project. Pattern 3 is not saved either. If I go here now to pattern 2 and I save just the pattern, not the project, function and yes, pattern saved. So pattern 2 should now be saved. Pattern 3 is not saved. So just to demonstrate what happens now, I'm going to press the little wheel again, go into project, load project, tutorial 3. Any changes will be lost, proceed with loading, yes. So, let's see here in the patterns now. Pattern 3 is not there anymore. Pattern 2, which was not saved into this saved project, was just saved using this. Um, it is saved, it's still saved. However, if you save something like this, save pattern, it will not, I think, update what you did to the sample list. So if you added some samples into the list, I think that is only saved when you save the whole project. So pay attention to all of this. So why could you save quick save a, pro, uh, a pattern like that? I'll, well, I'll show you. Now, let's add like a, a hi-hat there. Okay. Gonna go to Hyatt, do some of this. And you can hear it's not playing, right? And if you press function button, you can see it's actually not green, which means it's muted. This is a way to mute the tracks. Now it's on. Okay, a bit harsh there. The filter. Source. Okay, 
So let's save this now. Save pattern. It's stored now. Now, if I want to jam with this and have fun, I can later, I could destroy this pattern and then I could use reload pattern down here. So let's try that. I'm going to press and hold track again to control all of the parameters on all of the track at the same time. It's called control all. And uh, destroy this one. Destroyed it. Now I'm going to show you another thing. I'm now going to press function and reload pattern in order to reset that to to the stored value to the stored pattern. But before I do that, I'm going to copy the pattern so I have like a a way of getting back to it uh, quickly. Function copy copy pattern. Function and reload. Function and paste. Yeah. So it is in this crazy state now. Three and four and reload. One, two, three and reload. And now I'm gonna paste. One, two, three and paste. So I can sort of have like two uh, reference points um, at the same time and at any time I can update them like function and save pattern to kind of make a new uh, snapshot that I can return to or, or function and copy at any time to have like a copy of the pattern that I could return to this is like super super cool performance tools another performance tool is the mute as I just showed you like function Another function is um, trig conditions. It's also a very powerful um, performance tool. Trig conditions, what is it? I'm gonna show you right now. Let's go to that track number six, which is currently this annoying hi-hat. Yeah, and I'm gonna make it like so. I'm gonna make it like, like this. Okay. Okay, this is like the basic of the hi-hat in this song. Now I'm going to add more hi-hats, which I'm going to add a trig condition to. Trig conditions is up here. There is something called fill. If I add a fill um, trig, yeah. They're actually not played until I press this page, but only if I'm not in the grid mode. Perhaps uh, some swing could add some joy to this track. Let's see. Uh, swing. If I choose to record uh, something that I change with the parameters, like for instance on this track, I could record um, the source tuning. Like that. If I do that with Rec and Play, This is now burned into the tricks. So if I do this now. Let's record some um, length uh, parameters as well. Okay. 
save this pattern now I've made like a progress here now it's actually the same sounds it's very very different uh, approach to, to making sounds okay so now uh, this little pattern is just one page long it's 16 tricks long one bar what if I want to make it longer? Well, I could do that. Function and page. It brings up this little page. If I press it twice, or three times, four times, you can see we're adding on kind of orange light here. So I'm making the pattern longer. The pattern could be anything. It doesn't have to be, you know, four by four. It could be, you know, 11 tricks long, or, you know, 17 tricks long. It's up to you. So if, if, I'm, if I want to, I could also use this one to manually sort of change the length. Yeah. Okay, let's make it two two bars long. And then no to exit any menu. So, okay, let's see. So now if we did that, but even though we made like a second uh, page, it's not going to be empty. If you're already have something in the first uh, page it will be copied to the second page yeah duplicated right okay so now i just happen to to use the sounds that were in there let's start from scratch with sounds that we select okay so let's go to pattern uh, five just to make a, sh a clean cut and make something different okay so pattern five is now in a preset state <laughs> Yeah, so now you want to change that. By the way, all of the time we're working in one project, so when we're loading in samples now that we're going to do now, uh, we're going to fill up the whole project with references to the samples that are on the disk internally. Um, so if we at some point fill it all up, we maximize the memory limits, and we still want to make more uh, music, then we have to make like a new project and set up, start over from scratch. Okay, so we're going to load some samples here. Okay, so pattern 5, it sounds like this. <coughs> Preset state. So we're going to load uh, our own choices of samples right now. So um, I don't want this kick drum. I'm going to change it. Source, sample, I'm going to turn it. We can see this list. It's already there because the, the presets already loaded in 8 samples. We could change them or we could load more samples in there. If we change them though, if we replace the samples that are already there, then we will destroy um, stuff that has been made with those samples in this project. Because like in pattern one, it's using those samples. Samples, I'm gonna go down and come to a free slot here and press yes. It's like a shortcut going to the sample browser. So in the sample browser, you can navigate it by this, or you can actually do this as well. And you can enter by pressing yes, and exit by pressing yes up on these little dots there. You can also press function and right and left, which is like a quicker shortcut to navigating the folders. Factory. The factory drums are actually very, very good. They're s nice produced, and I think Electrum partnered up with some really great people to make these uh, these preset samples. Now listen to this. Let's go into the drum folder, acoustic, uh, ambient kit. The way to preview the sound is to press function and yes. Now listen to this. This is high quality production. It's like airy. It's got just the right frequencies in there. So I applaud them for filling it up with really great starting points. Now listen to this. Very, very good. Gr good sounding samples. Let's take this one. Press yes. And you can see it gets a number there. So every time we're browsing and we see a number like this, it means that is currently loaded into the project already. 
I'm going to exit this now and see. Yeah, 9. It's right there. You can see it here. Called BD1 Dirty. Yeah. If we just want to load in one sample, this is a good way to do it. But if we want to browse uh, a number of samples and, and load many of them it's in one go, you could do it like this instead. You can press this wheel again and go to Samples. Yes. And now we're in the full sample browser. Not just a quick browser, but the full browser. So we can see that this is loaded, right? If we want to... I think that clap is very nice. I'm going to press yes. And you can see we hook it like that. Okay. This is quite nice. Press yes. Hook it as well. It's not loaded yet. I'm just preparing what I want to load. This one. Yeah, maybe not that one. Okay, this folder uh, had some nice ones. I'm going to press right, the action menu. Load to project. Yes. Load three samples. Confirm. Yes. Three samples loaded. Now I'm going to go at, um, go into some other puncher kit. <laughs> Crazy. I'm going to go into... Yeah, this one is cool. This one, okay, I'm gonna load them too. Load to project, yes. Press right, right, the action menu. Functional left, functional left, going out again, functional left. I'm gonna see what this toolbox is. These are presets. Noise. Oops. Uh. These are very nice noises. Very, very good. Oscillators, what about that? Okay. This is quite hard to hear, but these are just one waveform, one cycle long. So these are meant to be looped and played. Let's load some of them. An acid organ. Okay, yes. Pulse, I guess. Acid pulse, yes. I don't know. Amiga. Okay. This one, a sign, a bright, this cave. This one, okay, just gonna load them and see see what it sounds like a bit later. Uh, load the project, yes, confirm, it's loaded. Now, I'm gonna go into my little um, recorded, okay. So this is a folder where I recorded some sounds. Okay, these two are nice together. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna have that kick somewhere. This is nice. Okay, those two could be useful. This one is fun. Yeah, this is a kick I made. Sometimes it's hard to get these silent kicks. I'm gonna have this one in there as well. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, this one. Okay. Now we've got plenty of sounds. And uh, load the project. Cool. Now we've been in the right menu all the time here. Going to the left is like the viewing menu. I can view RAM memory here. So I could currently see what's in the RAM memory. So we filled up to slot number 30. Good to know. View plus drive again. Okay, let's say we're done here. It's gonna make some music with what we just loaded into. This one. Yeah, that's the one we sort of started out with. This one, let's see something matching it. Let's see. Yeah, perhaps that one could be. It's not, it should be there, but you know, let's, let's keep it there. Something different here. This one, okay. The other clap, I think we loaded a nice clap in there, didn't we? Dirty clap, yeah, it's nice. This one, yeah, it's still quite kind of nice. 
Okay, this one could be our cowbell. Okay, yes. Okay, let's try those uh, uh, waveforms I talked about. This, acid organ. Yes. So how do we actually play it? We have to loop it. And we also have to loop it here. So let's, let's loop it. Uh, loop forward. Yeah. I'm going to go to the amp page and shorten the release time. I'm going to go to the source again twice to see what it actually looks like. We could change the length. Yeah, okay. We could go to the filter. Okay, I'm going to enter the chromatic keyboard. Try the source again and see what the other ones sound like. Ooh. Okay, let's make like a specific ring to this, let's say. Filter. Envelope. like sustain so when I'm going to the source again I'm using this bit reduction it's actually quite interesting what happens with bit reduction on so short uh, waveforms gonna make it short and add some reverb on the amp page okay let's see now we've got I'm turning off the chromatic again this this is actually not too bad I'm gonna keep it this uh, I'm gonna do something else hey 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 okay yeah I'm gonna go with that hey 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 okay maybe change the starting point I'm going to go over the reverbs on the different tracks. I'm making a kit, basically. This could be shorter. No, once it's long. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this. Now, there is a level, there is a volume on the amp page, there is an overdrive, and on the source page, there is a level. All of these uh, impact how loud the sound is. Like the level on this side, which you're adjusting like this, is the total mixing level of that sound. Uh, also available in this page, function and master. So here, you can mix the like the total track level on the source you can also select a level 
like the sample level, this is, I think, the first level before it goes into the filter. And then on the amp page, this volume, I think, is, the, is done after the overdrive has been applied. So this is like the sound itself's uh, own volume level. And then in the end, this is like the total mix of that sound. Okay. Yeah, keep it in mind. More reverb. Maybe some delay. The delay and the reverb can be adjusted here. Function and reverb is right here. If I want a longer reverb, I could do a longer reverb. Yeah, I could change the pre-delay like this. Also, there is like an EQ sort of uh, on the which uh, frequencies you you want to dampen over time. Uh, all, and there is like a high pass and a low pass. And the delay function and delay uh, also has some high pass and low pass. And it can also send to the reverb itself. So the delay itself gets like a reverb feel to it. And this X is a ping pong option to stereo, to bounce it in the right and left. But we have to change the width. And the time is the time. So the amp page, a bit less reverb, less... Okay, like that. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I think this is a nice starting point. I'm going to save the whole project. Yes. And now... Uh, so let's, let's make something nice and see what it sounds like. Now with the choice of our own sounds. Hey. Hey, hey. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tap the tempo here. Function and tap tempo. Yeah, it was almost in, <laughs> in 120. Let's uh, actually increase it, just for the sake of doing something different. To 124, I could manually tweak it a bit there. I'm going to turn on the metronome like that, and I'm going to pre-roll it one bar, and I'm just going to practice a bit. It's a bit fast, I'm going to lower the tempo after all. Okay, I'm going to make it two bars long. Okay. Okay, wreck and play. Two, three, and... Now it was quantized. I'm gonna go to the metronome, turn it off. Now I'm gonna uh, change the stuff that I wasn't happy with. So let's see. I wasn't happy with this um, with this one appearing just there. I think it didn't fit. So I'm gonna go in there and take it away. And instead. Would have liked this one to be there. So record, and there should have been something there, like this one. Okay. And there should be something there as well, like this one, for instance. 
I think it's interesting, uh, this last um, hi-hat, I think wasn't in the best place. Okay, this is has something to it. I'm gonna save this pattern. Actually, I'm gonna save the project. It's quite quick to save the project, so it's easy to do. And you could do it while it's playing. Save project, yes. So not interrupting him at anything. I'm gonna go here now and do some freestyling. I'm gonna do the metronome again and the pre-roll because if the metronome is active then we could do the pre-roll two three do -ba -do. okay you can see that uh, even though I was live recording once I was done with my thing I pressed rec by doing that, I assure myself of getting out of live recording with not, without stopping it. Because sometimes if you forget that you're live recording, you're done with the stuff you want to do, and it keeps playing, it actually keeps recording. So if you then do something with the parameters, you're recording that too. So pay attention to the live recording state. If it's flashing, it's live recording. Yeah? Press it again, and you're out. Yeah, so this was nice. Let's see. So pattern five now is kind of nice. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Okay, I'm going to see if I can find a specific place where this hey. sample is really cool and a bit out of the time. I think I had an idea. Like hey. right there. It's sort of buried, but it's still there. Hey. see that clap if it's nice with more reverb hey. 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 yeah yeah it's kind of nice um say i'm gonna abuse the saving possibilities because i'm, I'm really happy actually about this function it's been a bit mysterious sometimes. Uh, is it saved? Is it not saved? Um, basically, it's always saving into the into the buffer that it's working in. But if you want to make sure to save it to the file, when you've done something you're happy with, save it manually. Okay. Um, hey. This one. I mentioned earlier the trig conditions could be very useful. So... Let's make like a fill with the hi-hat. I'm going to do this manually. So let's see. I'm just going to listen to it a bit now, see what it sounds like. Hey. Hey. There's something called parameter locking that Electron abuses massively, which is great. And any trig, you could s change any parameter uh, to your liking. It's called parameter locking. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to take this and make like a, a a little more silent hit. Perhaps skip the beginning of the sample. Hey. Copy, paste, hey. paste. Hey. Yeah, I could do stuff on all of them at the same time. 
the change the um let's see the length yeah that's nice okay all of them copy paste paste oh okay yeah all of these i don't have fingers enough to do everything all of these i'm going to uh, go to the trig page and do a condition we call it fill i'm going to copy these four paste them there one two three four paste them here actually i'm just going to copy one paste 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 yeah so i'm going to go to the second page update that as well paste 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 okay do other hey. things as well this one isn't let's say hey. hey. okay let's see what we could do um, I'm gonna put it there and uh, tune it up with the MIDI with a keyboard hey. let's see go here Do a, a massive overdrive, a massive reverb. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm uh, also going to do like a bit reduction. Okay, maybe even more. Um, Ooh, that was a bit too loud, but. I got a different sonic quality by doing a, a massive overdrive like that. Okay. Okay. okay, maybe some. I'm, I'm designing a sound. Okay, this should also be part of the fill. I'm gonna go to the trig, condition, fill, and copy, paste. Paste, paste, okay. Hey. Okay, hey. nice. One, two, three, and. Hey. Hey. Too much reverb. Um, let's see. This, um, a bit less reverb. Yeah, okay. Copy, paste. Paste, paste. Hey. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It could be, it could be something. Hey. Okay, let's do some kick drums as well. We could do like um hey. 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 lower than This could also be uh, trig conditions. Um, fill, fill, and fill. Okay. Hey. 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 And another thing uh, we could also do, for instance, this one. We're using this sample here, number 26. But we have another one that is also nice. At some local place, we could change sample. Hey. Hey. 
let's see. This one. Hey. This could be the other one, for instance. Let's change it just on this trig. And there we go. Hey. could be reversed in just this place. And this last one could be a bit special. It could be this. This is a very, very nice uh, way of working, I think. I think this is super fun. Uh, sick. Yes. Okay, so now, when I start to like what I'm doing, I'm going to give this pattern a name. You see, it says untitled there. I'm going to press there. This is like a pattern thing. Rename. I'm going to call it, um, yeah, just a name. <laughs> Barbara. Yeah, just, yeah. No questions, I, I just gave it a name. When I name stuff, I just name it to the first word or sound that pops into my head. Uh, that's that's what I do. Save, yeah. So what next? How do we do this? Now that it's saved, I'm going to see what it sounds like when I do like control all and see, see what it feels like. Hey. Filter. Hey. this then I'm gonna reload the pattern then I'm gonna move to another one when I get there I'm gonna paste yeah I'm gonna then go in here and say rename and call it Barbara yeah Barbara 2 so now it's part of a sequence in my head and save pattern so this one This could have like increased um, uh, more reverb uh, that we were previously saying n no to. Let's see. Let's see. Hey. This is two. Hey.
maybe I want another like hey, hey, hey. instead of hey we could use something else there hey. so um, yeah source let's see I'm gonna do this quick selection again yeah how about this epic okay got a massive amount of reverb It's a nice sound, it's very different. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Record. Maybe backwards. I don't know. I'm gonna see if it sounds nice. Well, loop it. did this on a separate pattern now without even blinking and worrying about uh, what was going on in this pattern because each pattern is treated individually this is very deliberating uh, when you're creating stuff uh, because you don't have to worry which is very nice hey. there is a chain mode by the way F pattern keep pressing and press the second one you can see up here that it's building up uh, um, a chain playing chain it says that number one and number two yeah and number one again so this is something you could do very fast and once you select just one pattern the chain is gone Yeah, so this is nice. This is nice. What if you want to sample your own sounds? Well, it's very simple. Basically, you pick a device, plug it in, like so. It can take stereo input, but it will be mono recordings. Now, right now, we have this nice thing going, so I'm going to take another pattern while I'm doing this. Um, so, first, you want to press this. Dish. And then you want to make some noise to see, okay, yeah, we've got some noise, cool. Then you want to audition it or monitor it by turning this to yes. We can see external left is currently in. Let's change it to external right plus left, left plus right. I'm going to raise the volume here. I can see it's pretty low. Even more. Too much. Yeah. Okay. So let's just record that. See. So there is this nifty little threshold on the F. So I can set it up. When I press yes now, it is now waiting for me to get over that threshold and then we'll start recording. So I'm gonna do this. And then I press yes when I'm done, and it normalizes it, and then we, we have it. Okay, functioning yes to try it. We could trim the start, we can trim the ending, we can zoom, zoom in and zoom out. So uh, let's just pick one drum there. We're gonna, if you push and hold, you could go really fast. If you don't push it, it's very precise. Okay, so let's see. So, yeah, that's a kick from my uh, microtonic. Yes, to crop it, and yes again to save it. So, uh, function and clear to clear the name, and I'm going to call it 
Yeah, I told you before that I give it the, the first name that pops into my head, and sometimes nothing pops up. <laughs> the first name was Kicker. Uh, so let's do it. Save. Want to sign it? Yeah, let's do it. Now, now we're in the new uh, pattern. So now let's build something. It's right there. So we go back here and make another um, selection. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. So it's going to be toe bow. It's it's a typical tom. Yeah. So yeah, now the samples are here. Uh, you can save the project. It's they're loaded into the project. Uh, as you can see, so if I go to anyone source, you can see oh now this is like additional samples down here, right? Cool. Where did the samples end up? It's a good thing to know. So let's go into you know, this samples and browse around a little bit and see where they where they ended up. Recorded, I think, incoming. Let's check out incoming. Ooh, it's empty. Recorded. And C K M R O P R. Toe. Yeah, here they are. Yeah, this is getting long, isn't it? But now we've reached a point where where I want to change gears and show you something different. So I save. I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna return to what I did previously, these two patterns and the other one yeah, 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 yeah what if we wanted to play some other instruments in here over MIDI could we do that? absolutely let's do a little rig uh, I'm gonna connect some instruments and then let's do some MIDI cool Okay, so MIDI, let's do something over MIDI. Well, we could do it with a cool Volca FM first. Uh, we could just start it up, but it's a good thing to know what MIDI channel you're working on. This, I think it's some channel number three. Let's hold this and start it up. MIDI channel three. Yeah, I could select any channel here and press rec to kind of set that value. Now there's a set to respond and transmit on MIDI channel number three. And Let's bring out the middle cable and put it in here and put it in here. MIDI out. We want to send MIDI out to this, right? Let's see. Yeah, let's turn off this. It's working, right? You can hear it. So here, uh, we've got this nice thing. I think... What if we try to, to make some music into it, some MIDI music into this pattern? I'm going to go to, you know, these are the samples. These are the MIDI. So let's take the first MIDI track there and say that it's communicating to, to this machine. So on the source, you can see all these boxes and there are cross marks saying these are not transmitting anything until you do something special. And that special thing is holding down function and pushing on the encoder. So I want to transmit something on a channel function and push it. And then it says channel one. And now I can change that. I want to transmit on channel three. Ooh, MIDI is sent to the Volker FM. Let's bring out the keyboard. Oh, it's in unison. I'm going to do this now. Um, function and poly. Yeah, so I'm playing MIDI. I'm playing mid right over to this one. Okay, so what else can I do? Let's unlock this one. Pitch bend, function, and PB. Yeah, so we've got pitch bend unlocked. No, it doesn't respond to program changes, but it does respond on some sort of velocity. Not a regular velocity, but CC 
41 I have uh, recalled. So this one could actually be accessed. Let's check another sound. Let's take another sound. Yeah, this one. Fantasy Star sound. So I'm going to go to the filter page of the MIDI because there you can set up other things. So he, this is a place where you can manipulate the CC message data values but on the amp page you can set the values so I'm gonna set this to be CC 41 because that is what this responds to and then I'm gonna go back here unlock this so that I can change it and sure enough you can see the value over there yes okay we could live record this even so we turn off the keyboard check this check the timing yeah it's grid recorded change this value Maybe change the sound again. Yeah, this is nice. Okay. Yeah. This last one could, for instance, be, let's see, it could be like a, for instance, like that. Okay, so I'm going to go in there again, turn off the keyboard, go in here, go in there and go to the trig page and act as a second note. How about this? Let's see. Hey. This could have a second note as well. Yeah, I'm gonna try a different sound. Like this. Yeah, this is nice. Okay. And now we could go in here, change this value again. And this could be uh, parameter locked, which is quite cool. So uh, going off with a keyboard on here again, and uh, let's see. Second page could be like gradually more and more um, mean. Hey. There is a downside though, because this is a bit specific when it comes to this velocity slider. Uh, it has to be sent in advance. It's not at the same time with, with the note. Uh, it has to be sent before the note comes in order to match up so it's a yeah if we wanted to set this particular note to a specific value we could probably do this and set this to send a value but not a note function and uh, and trig is like a trig less uh, trig <laughs> If we want to go over to that second pattern, we can see that it's not even set up to work here yet because there are separate settings per, per kit or per pattern. So one would expect 
that you could go to the track and copy that track settings. But with MIDI, it doesn't currently work that way. With sample tracks, it does work that way. You can copy the track sound. Uh, with MIDI, currently not. I hope they implement it. Now let's let's do it manually. Um, go here. Okay, yeah. So this is just one MIDI device. Um, but there is no MIDI through here. There's just one MIDI out. There's one MIDI through here, but it can only be used as a, as a through. So how do we solve this dilemma now? We want to sequence more. We've got like eight MIDI tracks. Well, we've got something like this. MIDI solutions, uh, quadra through. So I could place this here. Ah, the mirror. So I could place this in the middle like this. And this is actually powered over MIDI. So, okay, let's put it right there. And this one in here again. And then this is splitting the MIDI signal and just duplicates it and sends it to several places, uh, several outputs at once. So let's put it in here. Come on. There we go. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Works, works, works. So now if we want to sequence something else, like the world's smallest synthesizer with an enclosure, for instance, the pile square, for instance, we could hook it up. You know, it's going to be messy now. I, I had like a plan of this being super tidy and neat, but it's going to be so messy. <laughs> okay, so this is also getting powered over MIDI. Um, I'm going to put it right there. So this one, you know the sound. This one is now uh, on, it's receiving on channel one, I think. So let's go to a second MIDI track. And uh, let's see, could be here. Maybe on, on the second half on this half, we're going to play this. Okay, so nothing is transmitting. Go to the source, function, dish to set it up. Yeah, yeah, we get some action going. This one responds to a lot of stuff. So, pitch bend, uh, modulation wheel. So, I'm going to take out the keyboard. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, different programs have different voice modes. Some of the modes are chromatic, let's see. This is nice, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to mute this now by pressing function. Yeah, I'm going to go there again, go to the first, trig something on the first. There. Now the modulation wheel. I'm gonna see what the other four can do in mid mode. So, what can I send? I could send CZ value, yeah, to the different CCs. So, for instance, CZ1. No, let's see. Breath control, mod wheel. Okay. I'm gonna send the LFO to the breath control. So, effectively, it will. Yeah. Fire off in different um different pitches because this is the way this particular patch reacts. Maybe random. 
Maybe I'm gonna trigger it as well and make it slower. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So another one uh, that I've been thinking about is the OP1. Uh, how could we bring the OP1 into the party? Well, uh, it doesn't have a MIDI input, but it does have USB MIDI. So if we have something like this that translates MIDI to USB MIDI, then it could all work really sweet. Let's try it. So, um, uh, in there. So there, okay, MIDI cable into number three here. Okay, and we need to set up the OP1. Uh, so we're going to go to the COM page. No, Shift and COM. And in here, if we press Shift, we can set up the MIDI channel. So this this wasn't three, right? This is number one. So this could be MIDI channel, MIDI channel two. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So now it's on there. I'm going to go to the drum. Okay. Let's see. So MIDI is, is there, so let's do like track three, just to keep it separate. This could be source, function, and press. We want it to be sent on channel number two, right? So let's see. It's a bit special because it doesn't respond on all the octaves with the drum kit. On the synthesizer, it does. would expect to be able to record chords and you will in the future but this firmware they haven't implemented recording of course yet it's coming so I can manually go in there and, and turn on a chord for uh, let's see second note should be like there I guess yeah and uh, this one as well, second note, maybe a third note. Maybe I'm gonna kill that third note. Uh, instead, take one, oops. Make this really short, gonna see it, the length, really short, dish, like that. So suddenly I could sequence this, which is a lot of fun. Oh, sorry. Paste. something there's only MIDI now and of course I could I could sequence that too just on this track I haven't set it up yet so let's um, let's do it track this and um, source channel dish Channel one, right? Program, unlock it. Pitch bend, uh, come on. And modulation wheel and breath control. Okay, 
good. Yeah, I recorded. idea i think this is super super fun uh, and yeah so uh, just remember when you connect the midi stuff um the way to get it to work go to any midi track and uh, to the source page press function and push the encoder to unlock these uh, and you're good to go the dig attack yeah it's really really fun to work with um, if you like some of what you've seen here and my work with tutorials and stuff online uh, and synthesizer jams and in interviews with people and documentaries in the synth industry, uh, you might consider throwing a couple of bucks here and there when I produce such videos. Uh, you can do that through my Patreon channel. It's very easy to set up. Uh, it's like an ongoing subscription-based crowdfunding where you decide uh, how much you want to fund uh, me with every time I come out with a video uh, super super helpful it's my job now and I'm so happy that I could work with with this full time and provide you with more and more interesting videos and tutorials you could also check out my web store which is store.truecuckoo.com uh, check it out it's going to be more and more filled with patches to buy if you don't like this ongoing uh, monthly donation com commitment uh, I fully understand but you can still go to my web store in that case and uh, yeah uh, the the dig attack huh it's 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 shaping up to be something really cool at least I think so just a little disclaimer uh, because these are the early days of the dig attack and uh, it means that we're still in the early firmwares like firmware 1.02 at the moment and it's mostly fine but uh, the MIDI implementation that we just saw is a little bit glitchy. It sometimes uh, crashes and there are some bugs that we're working to address. And I'm sending bug reports every day. So they, they'll they have it under control in, in the coming yeah, weeks or months at the latest, I think. So just a little disclaimer. Be careful. So maybe if you're planning something MIDI related uh, like right now with a performance based on MIDI, uh, you know, hold hold it for a moment until all these MIDI related bugs are worked out and then it'll be fine. Cool. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, the dig attack uh, and uh, yeah, Electron, cool. You guys rock.